So we are going to use variation of parameters for this differential equation battle. First, y double prime plus 1 over ty prime minus 1 over t squared y equals 24t cubed with these complementary solutions already found for us. And on the other hand, y double prime minus 2y prime plus y equals e to the t times natural log t. Both of these are going to be fairly difficult to solve using the other methods that we've learned previously, so we're going to dive into variation of parameters to figure these out. Starting with this first differential equation over here. Notice that we're given in this case y1 equals t and y2 equals 1 over t. What this is telling us is these are the two complementary solutions of our differential equation here. If we plug these in, then we'll get zero coming out. So when we do variation of parameters, we know that what we're going to do is let our particular solution yp equal u1 times y1 plus u2 times y2. And you can check out my full video on variation of parameters in the description, but when we go through this process, we're going to get two conditions that constrain our functions u1 and u2. Now this f of t I'm talking about here is whatever's on our right side of the equation. So in this case, that f of t is going to be 24t cubed. So in my video on variation of parameters, I actually went through how to solve this system of equations for u1 and u2 explicitly in terms of integrals. So I'm going to save some time and write down those explicit formulas, and we'll go through figuring out what those answers are. First of all, our u1 is going to equal negative the integral of y2 times f of t over y1 y2 prime minus y2 y1 prime. And similarly, our u2 is going to be the integral, this time positive instead of negative, of y1 f of t over the same denominator. So y1 y2 prime minus y2 y1 prime. So once we get these two integrals, we'll be able to figure out our answers for the particular solution. Let's start out, before we do these integrals, by figuring out what this denominator is here. So remember we have y1 equals t and y2 equals 1 over t. So if we want to do y1 is going to be t, y2 prime is going to be the derivative of 1 over t, which will be negative 1 over t squared. And then we have minus y2 is 1 over t, and y1 prime, the derivative of t, is just 1. So when we do this out, notice we have a t over t squared. Those are going to cancel and just give us negative 1 over t. Then we have minus 1 over t again. So our result is negative 2 over t. That's going to be our denominator in both of these cases. And now it's time to get started on this integral. So when we take a look at what we have here, y2 is 1 over t. And then we have f of t is 24t cubed, just like that. And then we divide by everything we have on the denominator here is negative 2 over t dt. So when we want to take a look at this here, notice first of all we have a negative times a negative equals a positive. So we don't have to worry about those. I'm going to take this 24 over 2 outside as a 12. Then we have the integral of, we have a t cubed. And then notice we have 1 over t in the numerator, but also a 1 over t in the denominator. So those two are going to cancel out. And we really just have t cubed all by itself on the inside of that integral with respect to t. So if we do that integral, we're going to get 12 times t to the fourth over 4, and then plus some constant a. If we do this, 12 divided by 4 is 3. So we have 3t to the fourth plus a. That is the value of our first function here, u1. So we'll write that here. u1 equals 3t to the fourth plus a. So this is our solution for u1. All we need to do now is figure out this integral for u2, and then we'll be all set for our solution. So when we do that, u2 is going to equal the integral of y1 is still t, and then f of t is 24 t cubed from what we have over here. And then we divide by, this denominator is the same as this denominator over here. So it will still be a negative 2 over t dt. Now when we simplify this integral, notice we have just one negative on the denominator here. 
So we'll bring that to the outside. 24 over 2 is still a 12. And then we have the integral of. Notice we have a t cubed times t on the top is going to be t to the fourth. And then when we have this t on the very, very bottom, 1 over 1 over t is just t. So we're going to have t to the fourth times t, or t to the fifth dt. Once we busted that out, we can figure out the integral of t to the fifth. That's going to give us t to the sixth divided by 6. And then we add some other constant b this time. Again, 12 over 6 is just going to be 2. So we get negative 2 times t to the sixth plus b. This is our value for u2. So now that we have both of our functions u1 and u2, we're ready to get to our solution. When we do that, we're going to have y equals, just like we said over here, u1 y1 plus u2 y2. So when we plug everything in, u1 is going to be what we have right here, 3t to the fourth plus a, and then y1 is t, then we add u2 is going to be a negative 2t to the sixth plus b, and then times y2 is 1 over t. So now we just have to expand this out and see what we get. 3t to the fourth times t is going to be 3t to the fifth, and then we have plus a t, and then we have a minus 2t to the sixth divided by t is 2t to the fifth, and then we have plus b over t. Now there's one final cancellation here, which is 3t to the fifth minus 2t to the fifth. And that is just going to be 1t to the fifth plus a times t plus b over t. So that's the solution to our first problem. Now it's time to get working on that second one. Now I've cleared the board except for the things that we're still going to need for this second differential equation. Now the first thing we're going to figure out on this one is notice that we don't have any complementary solutions given to us already. So it's going to be our job, first of all, to solve the homogeneous version of this equation to get our y1 and y2 so that we can start variation of parameters. So let's start out with that. We'll do it in a different color here. y double prime minus 2y prime plus y equals 0. When we want to solve this, we can set y equals e to the rt. Just like in our homogeneous equations video, you can check the link in the description. We get r squared minus 2r plus 1 equals 0, meaning r minus 1 squared equals 0, and therefore r is equal to 1 as a double root. If we have a double root, again, another link in the description for that. When we do this, the complementary solution that we're going to get is c1 times e to the t from e to the 1t, and then plus c2t e to the t. So these two solutions that we have here, e to the t and t e to the t, are going to be the y1 and y2 that we need to do our variation of parameters. So it's time to get started on that. The last thing we're going to need to do before we start the integrals is replace our f of t. Before it was 24t cubed. This time what's on the right side is e to the t times natural log of t. So now we can get ready to do these integrals. First of all, just like before, what is y1, y2 prime minus y2, y1 prime? Well, let's figure that out. y1 is going to be e to the t. y2 prime is the derivative of t e to the t. So if we do the product rule on that, first of all, we'll have 1 times e to the t if we differentiate t. And then after that, we'll have t times e to the t if we differentiate the exponential. After this, we subtract y2 is t e to the t. And y1 prime, well, the derivative of e to the t is, of course, e to the t. Now we just need to expand this out a little bit. Minus over here, t times e to the t times e to the t, of course, e to the 2t. We have these two parts that nicely cancel out, and all we get is e to the 2t. So that's going to be our denominator on both of these integrals. So now that we have some more space on the board, let's start with this integral of u1. This is going to equal, we have negative on the outside times the integral of y2 is t e to the t. And then we multiply that by f of t, what we have right here, e to the t times natural log t. And then we're going to divide by this denominator we said is e to the 2t. And then we have our dt. 
just like always, we're going to have some nice cancellation here. e to the t times e to the t on the top, that's e to the 2t. So that's going to cancel with what we have on the bottom. And all we're going to have left is negative integral of t natural log t dt. And in order to do this, we're going to need a little integration by parts. So let's try that out here. If we use our di setup, we want to differentiate natural log t so we can get everything in terms of powers of t. That means we're going to have to integrate t. So if we do that, we'll have 1 half t squared, and the derivative of natural log t is 1 over t. So we can do this, these two parts together. This is going to equal negative. We have natural log of t times 1 half t squared. Then we have minus, another minus over here is going to be a plus. The integral of, we have 1 over t times 1 half t squared. That's going to give us 1 half t coming out the integral just like this. The integral of 1 half t is going to be 1 fourth t squared plus our first constant a. So the final answer we have here is negative 1 half t squared natural log t plus 1 fourth t squared plus a. That is going to be our u1. Now we have our first function, and it's time to do that second integral. So when we do this, u2 is going to be the integral of y1 is e to the t. And then, as always, f of t is e to the t natural log t. We divide by, on the bottom, e to the 2t, just like before, dt. And we see e to the t, e to the t is going to cancel with that e to the 2t on the bottom. And this is going to give us the integral of natural log t dt. And some people might have the result of this memorized in their head, but we're going to do integration by parts just to prove that result. So we start out with our di setup. We're going to differentiate natural log of t and integrate 1, because 1 is all that's left in that integral. So we differentiate natural log t, that gives us 1 over t. We integrate 1, that gives us t. So when we figure out this setup, we're going to get natural log of t times t, first of all, and then minus the integral of 1 over t times t gives us 1 with respect to t. Therefore, we have t times the natural log t minus t, and then plus our second constant, b. So that is our u2. So we are in the home stretch now because we have our two functions ready, and we just need to plug them in to our equation for y. So first of all, we're going to have u1, which is what we have on the top here. And then we take this and multiply by y1, which is e to the t. And secondly, we're going to add on u2, which is what we have on the bottom. And then u2 is going to be multiplied by y2, which is our t, e to the t. Now we just have to expand this out. We're going to have negative 1 half t squared natural log t times e to the t from this out here plus 1 fourth t squared e to the t plus a times e to the t. And then when we add on here, we're going to have plus t natural log t times t e to the t. Well, this t times t gives us t squared. Then we have natural log t e to the t minus t times t is again t squared. And then we just have e to the t plus b times t e to the t. And now we see some more cancellation happening. We have a t squared natural log t e to the t minus 1 half of that same thing. So our final answer is going to include a 1 half t squared natural log t e to the t. Same thing right here. We have negative t squared e to the t plus a fourth t squared e to the t. So we do that, we'll have minus 3 fourths t squared e to the t. Then we add on a e to the t plus b t e to the t. And that last part is, of course, our complementary solution. So this is the final answer that we have for y. Using variation of parameters, we started with those complementary solutions, and then we plugged them into these integral formulas to get our answer just like this.